sequence and collaboration diagram on the case study ATM transaction. So, you know that sequence and collaboration diagram, these two diagrams are coming under the head that is the interaction diagram and it depicts the dynamic view of our system. So, sequence and collaboration diagrams are same, but obviously they must be having some difference. So, that is why they are existing side by side. In case of sequence diagram, we usually judge and we usually follow that what are the messages are being passed between two objects along with the progress of time. And in case of collaboration diagram, we are interested to see the dynamic view of the system and which object is receiving or sending which message to whom. So, to judge that one, the collaboration diagram is there. In our rational row software, we can easily draw the sequence diagram and by pressing F5 function key 5, we can directly jump to the, the collaboration diagram automatically, which will be developed by the software itself. And from the collaboration diagram also pressing F5, we can come to the sequence diagram. So, at first we shall discuss on the sequence diagram, then we shall go for the collaboration diagram. So, documenting the flow of events. The flow of events typically includes a brief description that is what is the purpose of that event and then preconditions when this event can take place, the preconditions, primary flow of events, what are the flow that will take part in the event. And then we are having this alternative flow of events, sometimes we might be having some condition. So, depending upon the condition true and false, we may have some alternative uh, flow of events and then post conditions that means after completion of that particular flow, then what are the uh, outputs, what are the effects will be there on the system. So, that is the post conditions. So, a brief description describes that we use case, we that use case will do that is the transfer funds use case will allow a customer or bank employee to move funds from one checking or savings account to another checking or savings account. So, that means it is telling that in our in our transfer funds that is the use case whatever we consider in the use case diagram we are trying to draw a brief uh, trying to draw a sequence diagram on that particular use case. So, let us go for a brief description on it. So, brief description depicts that that it describes what that use case will do that is transfer funds use case will allow a customer or a bank employee to move funds from one checking or savings account to another checking or savings account. So, from the checking account to the savings account or from savings to savings or checkings to savings in this way you can have all possible combinations. So, how this transfer of funds will take place. So, that is a brief description we have provided. So, next one we are having the preconditions. So, the preconditions for a use case list any conditions that have to be met before the use case can start at all and preconditions may be termination of another use case. So, when one use case what is the use case that is a functional requirement in a system that is a use case. So, what is the process is going to get initiated. So, this use case requires some preconditions when the conditions are true then the use case will, will initiate and that precondition might be the, uh, the termination condition for other use case. So, the flow of event describes step by step what will happen to execute the functionality in the use case. The primary and the alternate flow of event includes, so how the use case starts, the various paths through the use case, the normal or primary flow through the use case, any derivations from the primary flow and known as the alternate flow through the use case, any error flows and how the use case ends. So, all these things are coming under the topic that is the flow of events. So, I think you can easily recall that we are going to cover all these points. So, brief description we have given here preconditions we have given here. Now, we are going for this primary flow of events, alternative flow of events and then we will be coming to the post conditions. So, here you can find that here we are having what is the primary flow of events and alternate flow of events. I have, to, I have discussed already that whenever a certain condition is true, we are having the primary flow of events. When the condition is false, we can have the alternative flow of events or alternate flow of events and whenever some errors will come, then error flow will also take place. Next, we are having the primary flow. We are going 
for the more detailing. The use case begins when the bank customer inserts the card into the ATM. So now here we are having the transfer of funds. So that's why this particular transfer of funds at first the user will enter the ATM card. The ATM presents a welcome message and prompts the user to enter their personal identification number or PIN. In the previous discussion in the previous video we have discussed that in the problem statement you got the idea that PIN will be consisting of four numeric digits. The bank customer enters the PIN. The ATM confirms that the PIN is valid. If the PIN is not valid, alternate flow A1 is performed. So that means we are having the one condition whether the PIN is valid or not. If the PIN is not valid then alternate flow will take place otherwise the primary flow will work. The ATM presents the options available deposit funds, withdraw funds and withdraw cash and then transfer funds. So these are the options will be coming because transfer of funds can be of multiple different types. Next the use case selects the withdraw cash option. Okay. The ATM prompts for the amount to be withdrawn. The user enters the amount to be withdrawn. The ATM determines whether the amount has sufficient, whether the account has su sufficient funds or not. So whether this amount can be supported by the su sufficient fund or not. If there are insufficient funds, alternate flow A2 is performed and if there is an error in the attempting to verify funds, error flow E1 is performed. So, we are getting the alternate flow, we are getting the error flow depending upon whether any error has occurred, whether my transaction is exceeding my fund, whatever we are having on my account. The ATM deducts the withdrawal amount from the customer's account and then the ATM provides the customer with the requested cash. The ATM prints a receipt for the customer. The th point number 13 is the ATM ejects the customer's card and point number 14 is that the use case will end in this way. So whenever you are supposed to do any real life project, please follow these steps. We are going for very elaboration. So only to make you understand that how to draw the sequence diagrams and prior to that how to have our different flow control mechanisms. So alternate flow A1, for what it should be initiated? For the invalid pin. So when the invalid pin will be entered, the ATM notifies the customer that the pin entered was invalid. The ATM ejects the customer's card and the use case ends. And what is the alternate flow A2? That is the insufficient fund. So we had that uh, conception, we had that discussion earlier. The ATM notifies the customer that the amount or the account has insufficient fund. The amount whatever is being demanded is not uh, getting support from the fund. So the ATM ejects the customer's card and the use case ends. So this is my alternate flow that is the A2, this is my alternate flow that is that is my A1. So now let us consider the error flow E1, error in verifying sufficient funds. So ATM notifies the customer that an error has occurred in verifying the funds and provides the customer with the telephone number for the bank's customer service support. The ATM notes the error in the error log. The log entry includes the date and time of the error and the customer's name and account number and the error code. Error code will denote the error type. The ATM ejects the customer's card and the use case ends. So we have given you a detailed discussion that how the steps are to be generated whenever you are developing one software, whenever you are going for this UML diagram designing especially for this sequence diagram and collaboration diagram, what are the prior steps are to be documented. So operations in the sequence diagram. So let us come to the sequence diagram directly. So the process begins when Joey, Joey is the name of the customer. That means the Joey is nothing but one object under the customer. Insert his card into the card reader. The card reader reads the number on the Joey's card then tells the ATM screen to initialize itself, initiate itself. The ATM prompts Joey for the pin. The Joey enters his pin that is a four digit numeric. So one, two, three, four say as an example. The ATM opens his account. Joey's pin is validated. ATM prompts him for a transaction. Joey selects the transaction type that is the withdrawal. We are having three options were there. So withdrawal has been selected. 
the ATM prompts Joe for the withdrawal amount. Joe enters the amount that is $20. The ATM verifies that the Joe's account has sufficient funds and subtract $20 from the account. The ATM dispenses $20 and ejects the Joe's card and the card will get ejected. So, in this way you see we have gone for a uh, real life one transaction where the Joe is trying to insert his card ATM card with the pin 1234 and try to he tries to uh, withdraw money of say say $20 and then $20 is getting checked whether the account is having sufficient fund or not and it has been accepted approved yes the fund is there. So, $20 will get deducted and then cash will be obtained and then receipt will be obtained and then card will be ejected. So, here is the sequence diagram we are having. So, here this is my actor always remember in case of sequence diagram these are known as the timeline. So, this dotted line are known as the timeline this is our activation and this is our object. So, object means we are going to define object under the class. So, what is Joe? Joe is the object colon that comes from the syntax colon and what is the customer? Customer is the name of the class and this is the accept card ATM screen Joe's account and gets dispenser. We are having this first operation that is the accept card, then the card number will be read, initialize screen and it will be prompted that on the screen it will be prompted please enter your pin. So, prompt for the pin, so from there here the Joe will get the uh, prompt, he will enter the pin say 1, 2, 3, 4, the account will open, the pin will be verified and then, then this particular ATM screen will prompt for the transaction type. Joey has selected the transaction type as withdraw. So, I am going for the next part. So, that is why just see here we are having 10, 9 there. So, 10 is the next one. So, prompt for the account, prompt for the amount rather. So, enter the amount that is the 20 dollar and then withdraw funds. So, verify for the funds whether the we are having sufficient balance on the account or not. Deduct this 20 dollar and then provide cash on the cash dispenser and then provide the receipt on the cash dispenser there is a tray where the respective uh, the cash and the receipt will be provided and then we are having this eject card and this card will be ejected from this accept card. So, here this is the timeline you can follow that and you see always this activation time who is sending the message this activation time is longer compared to the activation time of that object to which this message has been sent. This messages are nothing but where we will be having our methods will be there and those methods will be written in the respective respective uh, class under which this object has been defined. We have discussed all these issues in our sequence diagram chapter, collaboration diagram chapter, uh, class diagram chapters you can watch all of them so that you can have a good grip over the subject. So, here is a case study where we are discussing only those aspects which are required for the better clarification. Now, this is our respective collaboration diagram. So, you see press F5 or browse the option the menu is browse then go to collaboration diagram to get the collaboration diagram from the sequence diagram directly. We did not draw this one, we actually drew the, uh, the sequence diagram and done pressing F5 the things will get formed. We have dragged this particular nodes we drag them so that the messages uh, can be seen there should not be any overlapping there should not be any crossover of this arcs. So, then return to the sequence diagram again pressing F5 you can move this and that. So, here we are having the respective uh, the messages which, which have been passed from here to this from this to this these are the respective messages and in the case of in case of collaboration diagram always the messages will be coming with some number. So, this is the collaboration diagram the messages is coming with the numbers, but obviously it may depend upon the software on which you are trying to draw the uh, UML diagrams. So, that will also uh, may decide whether this number will be coming or not. So, let us go for one demonstration for the proper understanding of this sequence diagram and collaboration diagram. So, here is a demonstration for you. So, in this session we shall discuss regarding that sequence diagram for the ATM project. So, we are having this Joey colon customer here customer is the class name and Joey is the respective object. 
but having the accept card, ATM screen, Joey's account and cash dispenser. So what are the operations we're going to do? In our sequence diagram actually we usually depict what are the series of operations and in which sequence they are supposed to be carried out so that the developer can get the idea and write the code accordingly. So accept card will be the first operation. So customer, Joey customer, this is a accept card, this is a respective class. So accept card is the first operation to be done. Card read card number, initialize the screen on the ATM screen and then prompt for pin. The pin has been entered as one, two, three, four. So the entered pin is as one, two, three, four. The pin will be verified, so that's why open account, verify the pin, so that is our Joey's account, that is our database. So now prompt for the transaction, so from this ATM screen to the customer, prompt for the transaction, select transaction, withdraw, so on the ATM screen the particular option will be selected, prompt for the amount, enter amount as $20 draw funds so this is our Joey's account so here draws fund for $20 the request has been placed so verify the funds so that is a $20 is there in the fund or not so deduct the fund $20 if it is there if the more balance is there then provide the cash against $20 on the cash dispenser and then provide the receipt from this Joey's account to the cash dispenser and then we're having this eject card so from here to here so Joey's account to the respective accept card here and then we're having this uh, operation number 17 is the last one so in this way we have gone through this I think it will be better if you can show such type of sequence diagram on our rational rows so opening my rational rows so here we have drawn the respective sequence diagram the same type of sequence diagram we have drawn here so here we are having the initialization then enter name and password so there is a banking screen this is a user and this is a account bank so here we are having this ok action then check account string and string so that's why it is a check account so now we will be having this get full name get get this one there is a get account so we'll be passing the string as input argument so account number type and the respective balance so in this way we have, we have drawn this uh, sequence diagram on a banking system so how to get the collaboration diagram out of it in our rational rules we're supposed to press only f5 that is a function key 5 to get the respective collaboration diagram directly from the sequence diagram so I'm pressing f5 for my keyboard so if I press F5 then this respective collaboration diagram will be coming and here you see here it is a graphical representation and it is showing that how the messages are flowing how the messages are flowing here so it is giving us the respective idea and also there is a all this particular it is actually so let me come to this so one two three four so four nodes will be obs will be observing in this respective collaboration diagram so the sequence diagram will be drawn and the collaboration diagram can be obtained very easily in rational row software just pressing f5 from the keyboard so the collaboration diagram will show us that how the message will be flowing from one node to another node in this graphical representation so we have demonstrated how the sequence diagram can be drawn and how the respective collaboration diagram can be drawn on the screen using rational row software so in case of sequence diagram so if you double click on this you are getting this detail and here you can change the respective synchronization so whether it is simple whether it is synchronous whether it is bulking timeout or asynchronous you will select any one of them and then go for apply then go for ok and then you can find that the respective bulking that very notation has come in this directed arrow so if you go for that if you go for the respective you want to change the text also you can go for the text here you can write some class names if you require you can also write some class names you can go for the detailing for this so frequency will be app periodic 
or periodic. So all the detailing are there. You are supposed to select the respective bullet to make that respective synchronization or the frequency applicable against that unidirectional line. Thanks for watching this video.